Hello Pauline, Hayden here from Pacific Toyota giving you the personalised virtual tour of our 2018 Mitsubishi Pajero Sport. Now look, before I get to the Pajero, seeing as though you're uh, obviously down south and we're up here in Cairns, uh, is I thought I'd show you who Pacific Toyota are. Um, so if you haven't been here before, this is us. Um, so here in Cairns we actually have two premium used car locations. At the moment we're on our main site. As you can see, plenty of stock in today which is fantastic. Um, and then directly out in front of us is Mulgrave Road. Um, so if we go about two kilometers into the city, um, we have our second used car lot. Now between the two yards, we can stock in excess of about 160 to 180 vehicles um, between the two yards. So uh, plenty of stock to be looked at up here. Uh, directly opposite us, we have our two brand new showrooms. So we've got Lexus Akans uh, showroom and our new vehicle Toyota sales team over there as well. Behind them we have our service and our parts department. We also have Hino trucks um, and opposite lot full drive accessories. Uh, so we're quite a, quite a large dealership up here. Um, we've recently just taken out used car dealer, well number one used car dealer for Toyota um, and that's uh, in Australia. So um, it's obviously an achievement that we're quite proud of. Um, but look, without further ado, we'll get back to the Pajero Sport for you. So as I mentioned on the phone, basically this is just going to take you through the entire car so I'll go through all the paint all the panels uh, the engine bay the service history uh, through the interior basically show you everything you'd want to know when obviously looking at a, uh, a used vehicle um, so first of all we'll start off in the engine bay give you a look under there make sure there is an engine so I'll give you a look up underneath the engine bay as you can see it's nice and tidy Nice and clean underneath there. Shut the bonnet down. Give you a look up the uh, bonnet there. Bit of dew on it, I do apologise. It's a bit cool here this morning. Um, but as you can see, no visible dents uh, down the bonnet, which is fantastic. Uh, same with stone chips. Um, there are a couple of tiny little ones just here, which have already been touched up. So if we work our way through the front bar here, a couple of little chips just here. Again, they've already been touched up. Uh, we do have that really nice gloss finish uh, Mitsubishi badge. Now, there is a reason why it's that finish and not the hollow finish. Um, I will explain that a bit uh, later on when we get inside the vehicle. Um, so we'll keep working our way around. So obviously with the Mitsubishi, they've really got those nice slim headlights with that um, uh, dynamic shield across the front fascia here, um, which is uh, what Mitsubishi is pretty well known for um, recently. Um, so first of all, we'll duck down the panels here and give you a look up there, obviously the side panel through right through to the rear quarter panel. Um, and as you can see, no visible dents down any of those panels there, which is fantastic. Um, we do have your nice two-tone uh, alloy wheels um, wrapped in your Bridgestone Jeweler all-terrain tyres. Um, so now they are an 18-inch uh, alloy um, and they've got plenty of tread left on those tyres as well, as you can see. So just work our way now through, uh, obviously, the paintwork. You look here, you've got the chrome finish. Uh, on the uh, side mirror with your indicator as well as the chrome finishings uh, for the handles as well. Now they are um, a pro proximity handle, uh, so this one here will unlock and lock the car for you if the key is in your pocket. Um, so moving through obviously the doors here, there's no real uh, evidence of any sort of touch ups or uh, any damage or anything like that. A bit of dirt on the door here. Uh, we've got the side steps. our way through to the rear of the car now. And you can see the tyre uh, tucked up underneath there. We do have your reverse sensors across the rear as well. So they go the whole way around. And your reverse camera tucked up underneath there. So I'll just put this, give you a look in the back here. So obviously with the Bajero Sport, it is a seven seater. They just pop up like so. And then these ones just pop down into that spot 
there. So obviously being a GLS, um, you do have your leather seating. Uh, there are a couple of little marks on the plastics at the rear here. Other than that, everything else seems to be nice and clean through that back part. And then the same with the tailgate as well. There's no um, visible markings that I can see on there. A couple of little light scratch marks just here. They should come out with a buff though. So we'll just duck down again beside those panels. As you can see, all nice and straight. No visible dents down any of them. So we'll work our way again through all the paintwork. Couple of little marks just here. Again, most of these should just come out with a buff. So light stone ship mark just here. And another one just down here as well. So all in all for the body of the car, um, apart from a couple of little stone chips and, um, and obviously a couple of light scratches, um, in very, very good condition from what I can see. Um, so we'll go through the second row of seats, giving you a look in there again, leather, all that leather finish there. Uh, down in here, dual USB for your back passengers and also a 12 volt, uh, uh, I guess, outlet uh, for another charger or, uh, or something like that. Uh, so leather finish on the doors as well, as you can see there, gives it a bit more style. jump into the driver's seat. So we'll just give it a quick couple of revs for you. Turn that steering wheel back around. Show you the odometer. So we're at 16,510 kilometers on the clock. Um, all your instrumentals are pretty much at your fingertips these days. So, um, all your uh, stereo controls are here, Bluetooth, uh, all your cruise control options, and then your center screen options, and then this little bad boy here. Um, so you'll probably remember um, during the start of the video, I mentioned the gloss finish um, Mitsubishi badge. Um, now there's a reason why they've done that, and it's because there is a radar in there. And the radar communicates with this little one here. So this is what we call radar cruise control. So basically what happens is when you set your cruise control, you set your radar. Um, so if I can just set that there, you'll see up there, if I press that button a couple of times, the bars drop, which means the distance drops between you and the car in front. So basically you're on the highway, you've got your car set to 100 kilometers an hour and uh, old love in front of you slows down. Basically what your car will do, it is all gauge um, that, that car has slowing down and it will drop your um, speed as well to um, below what that person is doing. Once that person speeds back up, you'll speed back up to your desired speed that you had your cruise control set up. So radar cruise control is a fantastic little feature, especially for highway driving. Basically you set it and forget it and, and you're all sweet. Um, so that ties in obviously with forward crash mitigation and forward crash um, detection alert as well. So basically it'll alert you um, and send an alarm that, hey, you're going too quick, you need to slow down, otherwise you're gonna have an accident. And basically um, it ties in with your radar cruise control, which is a, uh, I guess a really cool little safety feature as well. Um, so that's your full crash uh, detection uh, mitigation there parking sensors, traction control. You've got push button start, all your side mirrors with power fold uh, side mirrors. So they have to fold in, as you can see. Moving through, we've got all your window controls here. Uh, you're probably wondering what these little silver things are at the back. Um, that's what they call paddle shift. Um, so you can actually change through the gears without touching the gear stick, um, which is a pretty cool feature as well. Um, all your headlights are automatic. Um, and then you've got your windscreen wipers just there as well. Uh, so through to your infotainment system. So this one here is uh, obviously the updated system as well. Um, so not only do you get Bluetooth and USB and, uh, and touchscreen, but you also get what's called Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So if you've got an Apple or, a, um, or an Android phone, like a Samsung, um, you're compatible with this system as well. So basically what you do, you plug your phone in uh, through to the USB. Um, and then your phone will display on the screen. So uh, by memory, <laughs> don't quote me on this, 
but you get your phone, um, your music, um, your text messages, uh, you get satellite navigation, uh, Mitsubishi Motors app, and there's another one which I can't quite remember. Um, but obviously your phone is all Bluetooth, um, your satellite navigation is all Google based, so it's straight from your phone. Um, and then the SMS one, which is my personal favorite, um, is Siri hands-free to talk and text or Galaxy hands-free to talk and text. Um, so it's an initiative that, um, you know, obviously a, uh, the companies have sort of uh, taken on um, to basically get young drivers from picking up their phone and sending text messages and obviously not watching the road um, or what they're doing while in control of a motor vehicle. Um, so basically with that, all you need to do is literally talk um, to send a text message. So for me, uh, I've got uh, an iPhone. Um, so basically I just tell Siri what I want to send. Um, let's just say I'm sending a, a message to my wife. Um, I sort of say, hey darling, uh, what time will dinner be? Siri will then read that back to me and ask if I'm okay to send it. Um, I say yes and the message gets sent. Um, basically if she sends a message back, Siri will read that to me. Um, and ask if I want to reply. So it's a really, really cool uh, little invention, Apple CarPlay. Um, I think it's probably going to save a lot of uh, a lot of young drivers' lives um, from uh, obviously picking up their phone and um, and fiddling around with it. But um, cool little piece of technology uh, that one there. Uh, so we'll move right along. We do have your uh, obviously your dual zone climate control. So each side can have their ideal temperature. Um, so that's all in there, basically your temperature controls, fan speed, directions, um, your uh, demisters, all that sort of stuff in there as well. Obviously, uh, seatbelt warning, hazard lights, rear differential lock, get that down, so rear differential lock, and then your fan for the rear. So there is aircon the whole way through the vehicle, all the way to the back as well. Uh, so moving along, we do have your automatic gearbox, so park reverse neutral drive, and then flick it across, and you do have your sport shift, or I guess tiptonic transmission, if you want to be um, you know, precise about the uh, the terminology of it. Um, but that's where you can change up and down the gears, and once you're in that uh, tiptonic transmission, that's when you can use your um, paddle shift as well. So moving right along, we've got downhill assist control, um, which ties in obviously with the full drive system uh, down here, which is a turnstile. So obviously two high, four high, four high low C, and four low low C, um, which means just center differential lock with the, the C at the end. Um, we do have a power handbrake, which push down to release, uh, lift to engage, as you can see there. Down in the center console, got uh, two USBs, we've got a 150-watt inverter and a HDMI cable uh, port there as well. All right, service history. Now, if I can get in there, I think someone's locked it. So, I'll go to the keys. <laughs> um, we have two remote keys there as well. And the keys actually break apart. So basically you pull that tab and then that key fob comes off. You pop that in there, turn that, and that locks it. And that unlocks it. So it's just been stuck from something there. I'll jump around the other side. stuck on something there that's right, I can get that fixed up um, so obviously with the Mitsubishi it would have only had one service um, which is the 15,000 kilometer service done by us um, the beauty about the Mitsubishi is you only have to service the cars every 15,000 kilometers or every 12 months whichever comes first so nice and cheap to obviously run and service there um, but uh, I'll just uh, close all the doors and give you another final look at the vehicle Alright Pauline, so that is our 2018 Mitsubishi Pajero Sport GLS. Um, look, I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to give me a call. I'll be happy to answer them for you. Alright, speak soon. Cheers.